Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fellow siblings in Christ. Hope all is well with each and every single one of you guys. On the way home from visiting my wife's family tonight, tonight being November 23rd, 2016, we felt a lot going on to the point where we had to pray and rebuke in Jesus' name. And it got us to thinking, how many people are actually prepared for spiritual warfare? It was something that even I spoke out loud. There's a lot of ministries, and I, before I get deep into that part, there are ministries that are truly about the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me make sure I say that now. But there are a lot of ministries online, in the church, wherever, that are leaving people completely unprepared and naked going into spiritual warfare. If I like people want to ignore teaching spiritual warfare, we see a lot of churches teaching more about how to get a financial breakthrough, how to get this, that, and the other, but they're not prepared for the attacks of the enemy to come at them. Nobody's being prepared for all of this wickedness that's going on everywhere and how demons are attacking people, attacking them in their sleep, attacking them at work, attacking them at home, attacking them... On when they're laying down and all of a sudden a sex demon is trying to climb on top of you. Yes, there are sex demons, incubus and succubus. There are all kinds of spiritual attacks because <clears throat> the devil is against the Lord and hates God's people. So because we are made in God's image and those of us who truly want the Lord, the devil will mess with so tough. There are many of people who have been raised in church but not raised in Christ that's the sad part they received a lot of traditions from churches a lot of traditions they were taught but when it comes to binding and rebuking in the name of Jesus they are not prepared they are left on the lurch and wondering what can I do how did this happen they'll know the first thing about this this war being spiritual and not physical and in this video, I'm going to tell you guys right now, grab your Bibles, because we're going to walk this thing. We're going to walk the Bible completely out and break down exactly what it is that's meant to be about the armor of God and how to do spiritual warfare as far as knowing what is, knowing what isn't. This might take longer than one video. I'll just let y'all know now. I'll just go how the Lord leads, and I hope that it's a blessing. First, let me address those who aren't doing their jobs. Jeremiah 23, 1 and 2. I want y'all to pay attention closely for all of y'all that's not preparing God's people. Do you not know how the Lord looks at you when he says this? Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Of Israel against the pastors that feed my people ye have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them behold I will visit upon you the evil of your doings saith the Lord I want you to pay attention to that all y'all who's not on your jobs because all of those that you're leaving out in the lurch you're not doing them no favors and you're not doing yourself no favor either I'm gonna address y'all more directly in a minute just hold on just Hold on. Here it is, spiritual warfare, and the Lord giving us a blessing, which is the armor of God. Now, what is the armor of God? If you have your Bible on you, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to be right at verse 11. Know what you're going up against. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? When you have all these kind of attacks, from anxiety attacks to suicidal thoughts, to thoughts of depression, heartbreak and anguish, when you have all these temptations coming at you, people talking wickedly against you, people plotting wickedness against you, People trying to cast spells upon you. Yes, that's part of spiritual warfare. People who are trying to do witchcraft and voodoo against you. People who are not wishing you well but trying to plot your murder. Just for an example, that's part of spiritual warfare. 
Those are some of the wiles of the devil. Because the enemy's full, full objective is to destroy you, is to have you separated from the Lord and have your soul eternally condemned with him in the lake of fire. So whatever it takes for him to get you down there with him, he'll do it. He ain't afraid to do whatever it takes to get your soul condemned. And know this, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're talking about demons, fallen angels. We're talking about the devil himself. We're talking about witchcraft and voodoo practicers, the devil worshipers, those who are into the occult, those who are seeking wicked hidden knowledge, those who are truly serving Satan. That's what's going on. And in high places, we're talking about places of politics, places of entertainment, places where the big money is rolling, things of that nature, where big decisions can be made that are going to affect everybody. That's where the spiritual wickedness is. That's where these principalities are. But the Lord did not leave us defenseless. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having your loins girt about with the Lord's truth, with the Lord's word. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. What does the breastplate do? It protects your heart. It protects your heart. Guarding you from the attacks of the devil. They're going to try to come from you so tough. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. As you walk about every single day, the Lord is walking with you. And as you go forth, walking with the Lord, if he's guiding your footsteps so that you don't step into further danger as long as you're walking with him, but rather you're walking towards salvation, who is the Lord? The Lord is being glorified. The Lord is being praised. And you are being made more and more in his holiness. Thank you, Lord. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Again, thoughts of suicide, anxiety attacks, which I suffered the last couple of days. But I thank the Lord for deliverance. I'll tell you about that in a minute. All these attacks from demons to those who are filled with demons trying to mess with you. Every attack that the devil is sending your way, discouragement, seeing what's going on here in the world, things of that nature, anything that's going to deter you from Christ and make you feel like it's worthless, like it's hopeless, the shield of faith, which is faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in the Lord with your whole soul, heart, mind, body, and strength, and giving your all to God. In the face of all this wickedness, your faith is still in Jesus Christ. In the face of your own situations, in the face of whatever goes on in your life, you still got faith in Jesus. That's the shield of faith for you. And taking the helmet of salvation. What if the helmet of salvation is protecting your mind? Because your mind is focused on God. Your mind is fully focused upon the Messiah. And I'll give you an example. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah's everlasting strength. Now catch that first part. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind, mind, your thoughts, your actions, everything that comes across your brain, all these thoughts, your emotions, all of it focused on Jesus Christ. As you focus on the Lord, more and more peace is being poured within to you because the Lord is peace. In the face of everything the devil tries to throw at you, having your mind, heart, body, soul, and strength focused on Jesus Christ is an energizer. It's peace. It's love. It's joy. It's overwhelming to the fact where the devil can't get a good foothold or a grip on you. And the sword of the Spirit Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
the word of God, the Bible. How do you slay the devil? How do you slay demons? When you trust in the Lord, you study the word, and you know how to speak what thus saith the Lord because you studied the Bible, because you spent time in, in him. You spent time worshiping him. You spent time seeking his face. You spent time praying. You spent time praising. You spent time repenting. You set aside yourself from the whole world and everybody around you. And if that one-on-one -on -one time between you and God, if that one-on-one -on -one time between you and Jesus, where the Lord feeds your spirit directly, and as you pray, as you study the Bible, as you get filled with the word, every time the devil tries to come at you, you know what to do and how to do because the Lord showed you in the Bible what is and what isn't. So when you get tempted, you know exactly how the Lord looks at temptation. You know how the Lord looks at this certain sin the devil is trying to tempt you with. And you know how to repent and turn away from it. You know how to avoid it because God has fed your spirit. Because you received the word of God. When the devil kept trying to tempt Jesus, the Lord spoke word to him. When people try to come at you, if you have to, and of course, this is a wonderful time to do it, start spreading the gospel, pray to the Lord. If you have to speak it to yourself, start speaking scripture. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalm 91. You want to talk about peace that comes from that? What a blessing that it is. Let me tell you, I've dealt with anxiety attacks recently at my job. Every time I got ready to go up to my current job, it was like I just felt this overwhelming anxiety grip me. But then as my brothers and sisters prayed for me, my wife and I prayed, then I went to bed praying, I woke up praying, as I got ready for work, I prayed, when I got ready to leave, I prayed, on the way to work, I prayed, I clocked in and prayed, walked into my job and prayed, walked into my station and prayed. All that prayer, talking to God the whole time, my mind being focused upon the Lord, I felt no anxiety. That spiritual warfare, knowing how to wage it, knowing how to cut it at the root, knowing that to overwhelm the devil, you have to seek the Lord. To not allow the devil to overwhelm you, you have to seek the Lord. You have to make it fully about Jesus Christ. There are those who fallen on the other side of spiritual warfare who didn't put their whole mind on the Lord. And it went into 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. One of the biggest pieces of spiritual warfare the devil does is misinformation as well. Confusing you to the point where you believe something that's not of God and you think that is of God and it pulls you from the Lord's presence. There are people who unfortunately I know of who at one time was walking with God one, two things got into the air, and now they don't walk with God, and they've become reprobate. That's what's happening now, so keep your focus on the Lord. The biggest part of spiritual warfare is to let Jesus be your guide. Jesus be your leader. Jesus be your God. Jesus be your Messiah. Jesus be your Savior. That's the biggest part of spiritual warfare, because you can't win this war without Jesus. Period. Period. Anybody that tries to tell you differently, their, their doctrine is cursed and they're cursed. You don't believe it? Read Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 through 9. And this, I promise I'm going to address the ministers again, and here I am. Listen close and turn your volumes up. If there are those who are truly about the Lord Jesus Christ and spreading the Gospels, Praise the Lord. Keep going. Seek God. But for those who aren't seeking the Lord, here's a bit of advice. Repent. Repent. Because the Lord is going to have a harsh judgment for all of us who are doing ministry work. And yes, I'm speaking to myself as well. Do you not understand how the Lord looks at it? 1 Peter 4 verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And read verse 18. 
And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? Please don't play. We have a job to do, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Whether you're an evangelist or you're one of my brothers in the Lord who's out here being apostle, pastor, or bishop. Whether you're a prophet, whether you're part of the fivefold ministry, apostle, bishop, pastor, uh, prophet, teacher. You're out here, the Lord gave it to you to spread his gospel, whether in the streets, online, in the church, no matter where it may be. And the Lord will hold all of us accountable anyway. Do you want the Lord to look at you and say, well done, that good and faithful servant, because you've done everything you can to spread this gospel and get people returned for the return of, Ch of Christ, the return of Jesus Christ? Have you done everything you can to prepare people for what's to come? The Antichrist, the new world order that's being prophesied in Matthew 24, that's being prophesied in the book of Revelation, that's being prophesied in the book of Daniel. Are you preparing people to seek God? Are you preparing people to wear the armor of God? Are you preparing people to be on the battlefield? Are you preparing people to be condemned? And in turn, you be condemned. Because for every soul, you fail to prepare. Because you're too lazy and wicked to do so. That's blood on your hands. Are you willing to have blood on your hands? Because you're seeing money. Or you're seeing something else that's way more important than Jesus Christ and saving souls. This spiritual warfare is real. Are you doing your, your part to prepare them? Or are you standing on the sideline? One of the most tragic things to see is to see somebody is like comparing it to going into the military. When you repent and come to Jesus Christ, right then and there, you're enlisting in spiritual war. And the craziest thing you can see is instead of them being prepared through basic training to know what to do, how to do, to go about it the way that it's supposed to be done. You're just flinging and running to the battlefield. And it's just another person that's gotten destroyed. That's what you're doing to these people if you don't do this right, you guys. This is serious business. Again, I'm speaking to myself too. This is serious business. We have to be able to raise up souls to Christ. Bring souls to the Lord. Speak to them about the Lord. Spread the gospel so that another soul shall come to God. Because I don't know about you, but ain't nowhere in the world do I want to see blood all over my hands. I want to hear what well done I get a faithful servant. Tragically, so many, because they're so lazy, are going to hear, I never knew you. Please don't be one of them. I pray that this message reach every single one of you guys that need to hear it. Be prepared for spiritual warfare. These days are getting darker and darker. Are you prepared for the Lord's return? Are you prepared for what's to come? God bless you all. Peace.